Hi, I'm Amy Mahali with Be Well Clinic, and today we are going to talk about support for your body in the summer. This is the third in a series about the seasons. We have done winter and spring already, fall is coming, and make sure to watch those in the seasons that they apply to. Why do we talk about different support for our body in the seasons? Because the seasons are different. When I mean summer, I mean the Western Hemisphere, where summer is hot. The sun is out a long time, we need less sleep, different food, and we have to worry about the sun in a different way than we do in the middle of the winter. So, if we talk about the sun, which is what most people think about the difference in summer, what are we looking at? In the summer, we have much more direct rays of the sun exposure on our skin. This is great because those direct rays can help us make vitamin D much easier than we make vitamin D in the middle of the winter. However, People worry, what about that sun exposure? Is that gonna cause skin cancer? Is that going to be damaging? Do I use sunscreen? And those are great questions. The first thing to know is, no matter your complexion, if you eat a lot of animal fat in your diet and you have enough minerals in your body, your skin will be nourished and it will be less likely to burn no matter your complexion. This is great news because it means that you can help your skin not burn even if you're fair skinned. How that works is if the sun is hitting our skin cells, if they are nourished, they won't be damaged as easily as if they are dehydrated, they don't have enough calcium in them, or they don't have enough fat soluble vitamins, especially vitamin F. When we have enough of those, our cells are resilient. When the sun's rays come, it doesn't damage them and then our body can experience all the helpful things the sun does. UV rays and the other particles that come from the sun are very helpful to us. They help to detoxify our cells and our body. They help to energize the cells, which is why you feel so good when you've been out in the sun for a good amount of time, whatever that means for your body. And they make vitamin D. It's actually the rays, the UV rays, meeting cholesterol in your skin that is what makes the vitamin D. So. You need to eat animal fat for your body to make vitamin D. It doesn't just magically appear when the sun hits your skin. And what's really cool is that cholesterol helps prevent any damage from the sun's rays to your skin. Now, does that mean you just go out and stay in the sun forever from day one? No, you need to work up. Our skin isn't used to it. Melanin needs to come in. We need to have that tan to protect our skin. We need to pay attention if we are spending way more time outside than we're used to or that we're able to tolerate, we need to cover up. We need to figure out what way to protect our skin. And if you are boating or on the water, you also need to make sure that you are protecting your skin a lot better than if you were just playing on a grassy field. The reflection of the light is going to intensify the sun's rays and cause you to be damaged much more easily. If your skin is not getting damaged, you don't have to worry about your skin being damaged. If you are not frying and burning and blistering multiple times every summer or even every week for some people, you don't need to worry about the sun hurting you. The sun is helping. The sun is detoxing your body. And toxins are what lead to cancer. Detoxing is what helps our body to stay healthy. So, the sun's rays are good. We want to make sure we're ready for them, that we're used to them. We cover up if we're not ready for the length of time we're going to be outside. Um, or we find some non-toxic something to put on our skin. We do have a video about skin that just published that if you want to learn more about skin in general, and we have a couple blog posts on our website about um, care for your skin during sun exposure. All right, so we want some sun exposure. This is one of the benefits of summer. Take care of your skin. Two, that sun will help you detox. This means you need to stay hydrated. Hydrated is not just water, although water is important, but it's also about minerals. One of the things that happens when we make more vitamin D in our skin is that that vitamin D goes into the bloodstream and it pulls calcium into the bloodstream to match it. We need vitamin F, remember I mentioned that, to put the calcium back in the tissue. Calcium in the tissue helps you not to burn, which means vitamin F in the tissue helps you not to burn. What is vitamin F, you ask? It's a fatty acid combo that the liver makes, and eating animal fat often helps you make it, but some people need help. There are supplements for that. This is a video for another time, but vitamin F is really important, and you can look it up. It's a fun thing to study. All right, so we have enough D, we have enough calcium, we have enough vitamin F, our skin is doing well, we're not overexposing it, we're detoxing, we're drinking water, 
The water helps us to get the toxins out. So don't get dehydrated. Not only is it bad for you, but why do we get headaches? Because the toxicity is building up in our brain and other organs that, that we feel yucky and we need to drink enough water to flush them out. So flushing out, being hydrated, keeping that urine pale yellow is important and make sure you're putting minerals in there, especially if you're sweating. So how do you eat minerals? You wanna take good sea salts, um, like Redmond salt, Celtic salt, or Baja gold salt are my favorites. You can take pinches off your hand, you can put pinches in your water, make sure you're salting your food well. All of those things are gonna help you and make sure your body's getting minerals. When you're doing it to taste, meaning you're taking as much as you need, that's how you can get enough. There's also helpful tools like Highland has the bioplasma. Um, there are some different electrolyte mixes. Just make sure they don't have a lot of crap and fake things in them. And you can make your own. All right, so that's salt. That's detoxing. That is staying hydrated. And then the last thing that the sun is doing is it's energizing our cells. This energy is really helpful to our bodies. Of course, having energy in our cells is good. It gives you energy. It will help you get through your day. It will help your cells do what they need to do. It will help them to cleanse. It will help them to make and produce whatever they are supposed to make and produce, depending on which cell it is. And it helps them communicate with each other and be more in sync with the rest of you. So this improves your health a lot. And being in the sun is a great plan all the seasons, but in the summer we think of it a lot more. The other thing related to the sun, but not directly, is how long the sun is out. Even though we do need a certain amount of sleep, it is true that when the sun is out longer, we need a little bit less sleep. This might be not as much true for kids or babies. Um, it may not be really true for you if you are recovering, if you're not well, but if you are finding you need an hour, even two hours of less sleep in the summer, that makes sense. That is normal. So it is okay for you to do less sleep if your body is wanting it in the summer, but it's still good to make sure you're sleeping at least an hour or two before midnight because that is one of the times that your body repairs the most efficiently. So don't stay up super late and get up super late in the morning. Go to bed maybe a little later and you might find you're still waking up at the same time or sometimes even earlier. Listen to your body, of course, and what it needs. And that's about sleep. The last thing we wanna talk about is the difference of how we eat in the summer. If you're not familiar, there is a concept I talk about called feeding foods, fun foods, and fake foods. There's a video on that. Go watch that if you're not familiar. But the basics are feeding foods we should eat maybe 80%, especially in the winter, of feeding foods. These are foods, protein, animal foods mostly, that help feed our bodies and give our cells and our bodies um, the things that they need to do what we need to do to grow and repair and produce. Fun foods are much more focused on cleansing. These are mostly plant foods. Um, there's gonna be things like grains and fruit, as well as vegetables that are fresh in this category. Those foods are great in the summer. Our body actually often needs a lot more of them. So in the winter, I recommend 10 to 20%, but in the summer, we might get 30, 40, or even 50% some days of fun foods. This would be very normal for us as we're eating seasonally. You'd be picking food out of the gardens, um, harvesting them, eating them fresh even every morning while you're pulling weeds. That would be very normal, and it is normal for our bodies to do that. The main thing to think about is that cold foods are going to be hard for our body because we need to warm them up. So just a little aside, but make sure that you're not eating only cold foods all day every day in the summer because it's very hard for your stomach and your spleen. Your spleen is in charge of warming your food up and it can make your spleen get very exhausted by the end of the summer if you are not eating enough warm foods or drinking a warm beverage with the cold foods you're eating. Okay, so it is great to detoxify. Summer is gonna be about detoxifying a lot. The sun detoxifies us, those raw vegetables and fruit to some degree detoxify us, and we're gonna be outside breathing the air, swimming in the natural waters, in the sunshine, and it's great. So still nourish your body, but the focus is gonna be animal fat, minerals, and probably more fresh fruits and vegetables than you would have in the winter. That is some summer care. I hope that is, makes sense. We have more videos on our channel about lots of different topics, so make sure to check those out. You can check out the other seasonal videos that are already up, 
And if you like what you're seeing, make sure you come back next time for more tips on how to take care of your body.